Yeah, yeah any chair you want. Any chair you want. Hey, y'all. All right. How you doing? Thanks for being here. This is awesome. This is my first one. And when was the last time you were mentioning that you haven't done a lounge in how long, Lauren? In four years. The last one that I, the real last one that I did was like five years ago um, when the Look Up Child record came out. And this is the first, I mean, clearly this is the first record I've released since then. <laughs> so this is the first time I, I walked through that door and I thought, oh my gosh, I've missed this. I've missed the intimate the no in-ears acoustic. I've just missed the stories. It's so good. Well, if you missed it, we have a 100% sold out crowd. Everyone yes. picked up their tickets yes, to yes. see you. So thank you so much. So thank get ready for this. Um, Lauren, before we get into it, we're going to I just wanted to talk to you. And I know you're a great storyteller. And we do have questions from the listeners that we'll ask them a little bit later after cool. you do a couple songs. Love it. Um, but Lauren, if you didn't know, she's won a bunch of awards. I know, you know, this is, yeah. eh, you know, but it's true. Like you want, no, it's serious. What, She's won two Grammy Awards. I mean, how did that feel? I mean, that's I know. That's crazy. Seriously. I know. That's major. I know. It is, you know, it's so wild. I always think about kind of the journey to getting there. And people ask this question all the time. They say, so when you're in the studio, are you thinking about your Grammys? Is that what's like on your, and I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you just create and you hope that one day, you know, it it lands in that type of a space. But I just love the art of creating. I love being in the studio. I love that space. And this year, I'm so pumped because, I, or this past year, I was able to work with this um, producer. His name is Mike Elizondo. Does anybody know Encanto? That Okay, so he did the music for that and um, much, much, much more. But I just, his kindness and his humility, um, if we win a, win a Grammy, this next one, that's what I want to shine out. Like, that's the thing that I want. Oh, hey. That's the thing that I want want to just kind of ring out over the whole experience. It's beautiful winning Grammys. Um, and people always say, where do you put them? And for a yeah, long where time, do you they, put were, them? they were just in a box under my bed. <laughs> but wait, hold on. Then, hold on a second here. Plus, you have the seven. Listen to this. Okay, so you don't know where to put those, but you have yeah. seven Billboard musicals. I know. They were all under and, the bed. <laughs> and two American Music Awards? Yeah. So don't tell me all these are under your bed. Okay, they were all under my bed, and then Lee, my manager, had them, in, I think, in storage or something. And then we, we threw um, this RIAA kind of party at my house and I was like oh my gosh if I don't put those things out on the shelf I'm gonna get in trouble so I didn't have um there in my little studio piano room I put a couple of them on the shelf that is awesome yeah. that is awesome well we feel really blessed to have you here oh. um your music just I mean you know that I'm a fan and I'm trying to host this and be a fan and that's you know that's that's actually really for me um, and I'm sure all of you we're all here because we love and relate to your music in mm -hmm. all different types of ways mm -hmm. and um, you know you say um, was on repeat for me because it got me through a time in my life just like a lot of people in here if it was a wonderful time or a time where you needed help mm -hmm. um, that song really it, it really got me through a time where I needed it. So wow. I wanted to thank you oh, for that song. It, it really you. did. So Thank you. Thanks for being vulnerable and just sharing. I, I, mean, I can't believe it. We have all these people in here and I'm being vulnerable. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I'm in a therapy session. So anyway. Welcome. Come sit a little closer. <laughs> I love a Lauren. I'll pay whatever for a Lauren Daigle session. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. That means so you awesome. have um, the new record coming out May 12th? May 12th. It cannot come faster. I'm like, get over here. And um, your new single, we're playing on Lucy 93.3, Thank God I Do. Yes. And the video is, I guess the only word I can say for the video besides I love the song, um, the video is beautiful. Like, uh, who came up with that concept? And yes. can I just ask you? Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. But, like, I love, you know, the headpiece stuff mm -hmm. that you wear. Because you do wear that stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. The head piece in that video is um where where did that in it's like a will you explain because i don't yes. want to say it wrong yes. so i would say it's a plant okay so it it's it is okay. it was <laughs> this guy's name's fitch and he is so talented um he does all sorts of weird um 
sculptural kind of headpiece sort of things. Like he can figure, look, I've got like the most limp hair, right? It's just straight as can be, it is what it is. But he can somehow make it stand up and he's just, he's super, super talented. But this headpiece, um, he put my hair into these little balls all around my head and he would put each strand of, or each stem of a flower in one at a time. So that thing, every time we went, we, we did that three different times. We had a pre-shoot, a photo shoot, and then the actual video shoot. And each time I was sitting in that chair for two hours, like getting my head just stabbed by <laughs> stems, like, oh my gosh. But, but each one of them is completely different because he made it in real time, which was really, really special. Um, it wasn't something he constructed at home and then just sat on top of my head. That was really fun. And who came up with the concept? It was a whole team. It wasn't just a Lauren thing. Um, my creative director, his name is Joel, and he sent over some of these concepts. And the, the whole idea is that, um, well, thank God I do, is all about just kind of my season during COVID and what, I mean, I really feel like God brought me to the bottom of myself in so many ways. And then in that, he surrounded me with so many friends and people that were just able to encourage me. And sometimes we need each other. Like we need the people next to us to say, you might not remember who you are in this moment, but I'll, I'll tell you who you are. I'll remind you of who you are. And kind of those people that remind you to get to the other side. It's worth it on the other side. Just keep pushing through. And um, that was definitely a lot of friends that were around me at the time. So the video, there's this expression of there's these flowers all over and it's kind of meant to be somewhat whimsical. Um, and there's a stop sign at the very front of the video that's bare. But by the time the chorus or the um, bridge hits and then the, the chorus ends, the uh, stop sign is full of flowers. And that's just meant to kind of show what it is when the right people come into your life, like how there's a I, I love it. It's like that concept of, you know, you might have fear in your life, mm. but for me, I try to walk through fear to yeah. get to the other side. Yes. And sometimes it's very difficult. Yeah. So that concept right there is very relatable, I think, to most people. Mm -hmm. We run into fear and to get to the other side, however mm -hmm. we want to get to the other place. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a great way of putting yeah. it. I love yeah. it. I really that, do. I went to see a neurologist because after um, – I ended up getting COVID and after just a lot of my body was different. Like there were just things that had changed. It didn't actually affect my, it did affect my lungs, but not to the degree it affected my brain a lot. So I went to see a neurologist and he told me, do you know that the only way through, the only way to get over fear or to get over anxiety or to get over anything like this is to go through it. And I was having panic attacks on planes. I'm like, okay, this isn't going to work out so well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, we have to fly all the time. And so I was like, what? Like, how can I get around this? Like, is there something that I can do that's like, ah, oh, it's over? And he was like, no, you just have to keep getting on the plane. And I was like, no, no, that is not the answer for someone who is like literally having panic attacks. And he was like, I'm telling you, just keep getting on the plane because eventually your brain will rewire itself and you'll find yourself really comfortable all over again. But the only way to get over fear is to go through it. I hope that worked because you're it did. doing a tour overseas. Yeah, so. and I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you and know? you're here too. We flew here, so it did. It worked. He said, give yourself... A, this was like a whole... <laughs> he said, give yourself 100 flights. I was like, oh my gosh. He said, but by the 100th flight, you won't even know it. It'll just be like second nature again I and I, I was like thanks I needed this but I will document every single one of them because we will get to the hundred mark real quick before you head into the songs is you <laughs> yeah, are sorry. very easy to talk to yeah. and very personal and sometimes it's just like okay you know sing but I had to ask you one more question <laughs> yeah do it let's just do a little bit more um I know you've met a lot of people because you've been at the Grammys mm -hmm. Billboard American Music Awards what art is there an artist that you met that you absolutely just love that you oh. just since I know it okay, maybe if you have to pick two. Yeah, I'm like that's two hard. artists that okay. you met that just really influenced you or that you just mm. thought were just really cool that okay. we might not expect, you know, okay. to like. This is one this is a you might not expect moment. Reba McIntyre, who is like <laughs> there's a couple of chuckles. She knows when I say every single person, so when we did the ACMs together, she was talking to 
crew guys and stage hands and all these, and not just like, hi, I'm Reba, hey, good to see you. It was like, hey, Charles, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got to see you. How's your wife doing? Is she, is she you know, beating cancer? Hey, um, yeah, Zach, how's your baby? I know that you had a baby two months ago, right? And I was like, whoa, I mean, there are so many people making these events happen, and she knew all of them from a first name basis. She was so kind, so humble, and I said to her, I said, Reba, I am amazed by you. And she goes, honey, we've been doing this thing for as long as I have. <laughs> you better know everybody's name backstage. <laughs> I was like, okay, duly noted. <laughs> that is a, that's a great way for longevity in this business. Yes, you yeah. know, like that's it really was. awesome. It was really special just to get to see somebody who she's been in it for a long time and still cares about the right thing. It was really sweet. Love it. Well, yeah. you want to get in some music? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. You guys, Lauren Daigle in the Lucy Lounge. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. If you recognize any of these songs, you are more than welcome to sing them with us. This isn't like... I must stay silent. If you feel it, you just sing it. It's, it's all good. Let's make this our living room. This is You Say.
Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Getting the party started. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, so you'll, you'll do another song, cool. and then we'll uh, do a poem, some questions. Love it. Um, really quick. Okay. So there is an Austin <clears throat> connection in you, besides yes. you've been here. Yes. Um, you look like you've been here. Jesus. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's the Louisiana influence. I can't help it. <laughs> I love the outfit. No, thank I'm you. Really, um, so you played at the Austin City Limits Musical Festival. Yes, I know. How cool is that? <sighs> okay, does anybody remember the year <laughs> that it was freezing cold and then crazy hot or was it opposite was it crazy hot and then freezing cold that was when i played and the the wardrobe was quite different from one to the next the first the first one that we did the i think they said joseph tell me if i'm wrong was it like 120 degrees on stage something like because all the computers started frying because some of like we have some computers and different things on stage they literally were melting in the sun because there's a black floor on the bottom, so it's just collecting all that heat. The next week, I was like, oh my God, I can't function. It was so cold. It, that is one of, people always say, what are your favorite festivals? Lollapalooza, Austin City Limits. I, 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 the Lollapalooza thing is, were you, I mean. Unbelievable. Right? What's so between, well, I hate to say between the two. Yeah. I mean, Austin City, this is what I love about Austin City. Well, first, wait, okay, okay, okay. I got to say this. Finish. I know okay. you know why, because there was a t part two to that, okay, but okay, I love okay. that story. <laughs> you, were you on the same stage with Guns N' Roses? Not at the same time, but did you, were you there with Guns N' Roses? I, I, I was thought Gary I read Clark that you were. Jr. and then Childish Gambino. Okay. So, because it's such on a diverse lineup, always. Yeah. yeah. So I was, a, I just thought maybe Guns N' Roses was there. No, but welcome to the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew fan. up on Guns N' Roses. Uh, I thought you might <laughs> yeah. have. My, my dad would always. He played this game called the Dollar Game, and anytime we got in the car, he listened to rock. Like classic rock was his jam. Everything from the '60s, '70s, '80s, and I love that music. Fleetwood Mac, Journey, just all of it, right? And Guns N' Roses was definitely, I will never forget that, that CD case, just always sitting in my dad's sleeve. But the, the dollar game was if we could guess who was singing, if we could guess the singer or the artist or the band, we, he would give us a dollar. If it was really hard, he would give us $5. Now, the thing that's so interesting about that is he got to listen to whatever music he wanted. It was like the best incentive. When you've got like three kids in the back seat who are gonna fight over the radio, he's like, I'll pay you to let me listen to my own music. <laughs> Genius. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> You're like, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, I got some good music out of it, you know? Yeah, no, what, that's yeah. a cool influence. Not so much cash. Right. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a couple questions real quick. Yeah. Um, these are from people out there. Cool. Okay, okay yeah. Um, all right, so this one is from Betty. Um, I know the last name I'm going to mess up. Betty Meeker? Betty? Is there a Betty here? I'm Betty. Hey, Betty. <laughs> hey. What is your last name? Wow. <laughs> I did, You're doing great. I did You're doing really great. well in school. Can you tell? <laughs> You're doing great. I'll pay you to buy me a No, you don't need to. I need to, you know. All right. Um, okay, so the question is, when did, this is a great question. When did you realize your voice was special? Ooh. You know? Yeah, that's a good question. Were you that singing in the question. back seat two Guns N' Roses? All the time. I never stopped singing. So... My parents would always say, you know, the house was the music box because they would wake, I would wake up and they wouldn't see me, they would hear me. I was just always singing. When I couldn't sing, I was whistling. I got detention once for singing in class, okay? I was literally always singing. And um, I remember I, I was sick for a little period of time in high school and outside of that, it was like two years I was placed on homebound, but I would sing around the house all the time. And my mom said, hey, there's something to this. We should probably, you know, see if she wants to really pursue this. And they were not, uh, they were not the parents that were like forcing me into music because there are those. It was definitely not that situation. Um, but she said, "Do you want to do voice lessons just to try it out and see if that's something that you'd be interested in?" And I was like, "Yes, please, give me, give me something to do." So I started voice lessons, and um, I started singing for my church choir. And when I was singing at church. Um, my dad and I would watch American Idol all the time. 
And I knew, like, my little church was tiny, y'all. I'm mean, talking like 200 people, maybe. It was just, it wasn't one of these mega churches. It was little, little. And I, I thought to myself, okay, well, I can sing for the choir in church, but I don't know if I'm really a good singer. I thought I was screaming, like, ah, all those big notes. I always thought that was screaming. I didn't know. So the, the um, choir director was like, hey, I want you to sing this song um, on Sunday. Sing it for me real quick so that, you know, we can work on it. And I sang very sheepishly. I was like, who's in a he said, Lauren, I have heard you laugh before. You better sing this song, girl. And I said, okay. So I started belting it, but I didn't know. And I just looked at him. I was like, isn't that screaming? Like, I don't, I don't get it. He was like, no. So I started, I was his maid, and I would scrub his toilets in exchange for voice lessons. That was the exchange. Wow. Because I was like, I just want to sing. I want to know how to do this thing, and I'll do anything. Like, if I need to scrub toilets, I don't care. I want, I want to learn. I was all about that sweat equity. So... <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward, I tried out for American Idol, and I thought it's my first time. There's actually a lot of rounds before you even make it to the, the judges round. Um, and there were 10 people, 10,000 people, 10 people. <laughs> there was 10,000 people that auditioned that day. And we were in line at 3 o'clock in the morning like, okay, we can do this. And I ended up singing and making it to the next round. And I was like, hmm. And that round narrows from like 10,000 to like 1,500. And I thought, well, that's kind of crazy. I don't, I don't know. I like in that's my head, I'm thinking, holy cow, how did it in the world did that just happen? Because I've only ever sang in front of 200 people at church. So I'm not thinking there's anything special here. I'm just thinking, hmm, you know, that, that was kind of wild. As the rounds kept going, I thought, okay, this is kind of interesting. Maybe I'm bigger than, maybe my voice is a little bigger than just my 200 people church and that was the first time I was like there's kind of something special going on here and all that it was I got told no so let's be honest here it wasn't necessarily that it was someone seeing something in me that I'd always longed for in myself um and I think that moment happened in the course of kind of going down this path with American Idol so that was the first time I really thought maybe there's something more to this than just me you know at home, singing in my bedroom and writing songs, you know? And uh, really quick on American Idol. Yeah. So someone sang your song on American Idol. I'm just, because mm -hmm. you brought it up, I yeah. have to. Yeah, yeah. Someone sang your song on American Idol recently. Yes. And you came out and surprised them? Yes. I oh. mean. Megan. How Precious. cool. Can you imagine? You're like a fan. You're singing your song, <laughs> and here comes Lauren Daigle out. I mean. <laughs> she and. It was special. Was she was a gem. Like, she, one, is actually so talented. And two, she thought Katie was singing along with her. So she kept looking like, what? where is this other voice coming from? Like, what is going on? And she said, finally, she looked over and saw me. And the fun part about that whole experience, one of the fun things, is that nobody knew. The, the producers had a code name for me. And no one, like, the judges didn't even know. So all of their reactions were like, genuine in real time um and Megan I met her mom in front and she was like she's gonna lose her mind I said but are you sure she knows what I look like because <laughs> if not this is gonna go so bad <laughs> like so bad I just kept saying are you sure she knows what I look like because otherwise it's gonna be like who is this weird chick just coming <laughs> in <laughs> She knew what I looked like, and it was really, really special. That's She's a beautiful. cool story on auditioning and all the way sh showing up on the TV yeah. show. Oh, it, yeah. I mean, that's really, really It's inspiring. cool. And the producers that were there when I was a kid, or, yeah, <laughs> really a kid, um, they're still there. So it's fun because you kind of run into the people who were a part of your process, too. That's awesome. The ones who told you no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, all right, let's, let's do another song. You got another Love song it. for us? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Lauren Daigle in the Lucy Lounge. Here we are. All right. This song is called Waiting. The, the acoustic version. Woo!
That's what it feels like waiting for you. Thanks for that last part, Ooh, Lauren. You're welcome. I know you needed it, so. I did. <laughs> All right, so um, let's do this. I have one more question I want to ask you from a listener. All right. I like this question a lot, because um, I actually have the same question. OK. Um, because I think we might all have this question in our jobs and our busy lives. Mm -hmm. um, how do you manage balancing your career and also mm -hmm. growing in your faith? Ooh, that's a very good question. You know, because I think it relate. I think we can all relate to that. Mm -hmm. I know I can, and I oh, see yeah. a lot of people nodding their heads because we all live busy lives, yeah. children and whatever. Yeah, you know? it's it is hectic. It's only getting faster too. I don't know if y'all <laughs> feel that. It's like, oh uh, yeah, <gasps> how much time passes in two seconds? Um, these are the things that I try to keep into practice in the process of the busyness. One, and this is going to be the uh, less phone. Like, less being connected to my phone every five seconds, which and is How really, do you do that? Right? Can you tell me? It's really hard. You, you have a lot of people very mad at you. Um, <laughs> it's, it is. It's like, it's important to just step away, even if you say for the next hour or for the next 30 minutes, or if you even know where your threshold is in the day of, like, this thing is always with me, always controlling every second. For me, I know that that's a part of what I do. Um, I don't walk around with a laptop because... I have one right here in my pocket, you know? And all the, th the decisions that I have to make every single day are right here on this phone. But it's I think it's healthy to just kind of step away for a second and say, I'm going to remind myself of the good old days. All the kids in here are like, I don't even know what you're talking about, but thanks. <laughs> but I do. I try to have, like, one moment a day where I remember, like, normal connection, whether it's with people at the grocery store, whether it's pumping gas and waving to the guy next to you, like just some some element of normal connection. And you, you'll be surprised at all the ways that you can see little fingerprints of God in your day. If you just allow yourself just ever so slight a little bit of space. Um, and then the other thing is trying to practice a little element of stillness. Like every, it, whether it's in the morning, I uh, I used to be the person that, if I needed to be somewhere at 9.30, you better believe I was setting my alarm for 9.15. I was waking up. I was going to shower and be completely dressed at, by 9.20. And then at 9.25, I'm walking out the door, and I'll be there at 9.35, so just deal with it, right? <laughs> and I have try, I've actually tried to not do the rush thing in the morning to where I can have just a moment of stillness before. Like, where, what moment can I listen to God? I think listening throughout your day is really important for your faith. Just being still... Just 
Even you, if you did like 10 minutes, you will be shocked at how long 10 minutes can feel because of how fast our, our society's gotten, right? If you give yourself 10 minutes, everybody has 10 minutes in their day. I am one of the busiest people on the planet. I promise you have 10 minutes. And if you just even set a timer and say, for 10 minutes, I'm going to be still. I'm just going to listen or I'm going to think or I'm just going to sit here and breathe or pull up some scripture and just sit and think about, like, whatever. You can do nothing for 10 minutes, and it will give you so much more margin in your day than what you realized and um, connect you to the things that really matter. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to take that. I'm yeah. taking that with yeah, me. Yeah, just a little second. It really just, is. It gives you room to breathe, you know. I can put the phone down for an hour. Yeah. I will attempt. Yeah. Try <laughs> it. Just try no, it. See what I happens. think that's great advice. The thing is stressful. I know. It is. It well, you know, okay, so we're going to go on a little rabbit trail for two seconds, and I promise we're going to get back on, <laughs> on point. But I did this thing um, over, not this past weekend, but the last weekend. It was called a digital detox, okay, which is like, oh, gosh, here we go. But this psychiatrist came in and talked all about the way that our brains interact with these phones and how the algorithms set up by Facebook and all these in incredible platforms um, – they're actually trained to make dopamine hits to your brain over and over and over and over again. And so when you realize like people are dealing with anxiety and depression and all these things, it's because our brains aren't, we're not supposed to have these this many dopamine hits throughout the course of a day. It's not giving our brain enough time to like refresh itself before getting another one with a swipe. And that's so anti-cultural, right? We're like taught to build our numbers and build all the things. And it is, there are great components to it. I'm not like anti-technology or whatever, but it's interesting at how these algorithms really do kind of hurt our na the way our brain naturally is formed and the way it, it processes information. Um, so with that, even just like one hour, when I went, when I talked to the psychiatrist, she's gone the full bit. She like has this thing, it's called a gab phone and it is only maps, texting, and phone. That's it. And it's like a screen you can text on and all the things. But she's like, I only use that because I, it means I got my life back. Like I got to, now I just talk to people in person or I go out in the yard and whatever. She said. I, I think I like your version back. a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. The hour. Yeah. Take an hour yeah, instead I mean, of a full the, life change. The, the algorithm, I got to get off that uh, Vanderpump Rules ag algorithm. <laughs> let me tell you. They'll keep, you know my what I'm talking friend about. talked to me about this and was like, you will stay sucked in over and over and over. I don't know. I'm not cool. I don't ever watch TV. Uh, literally ever. That's why I'm wearing this. It's probably, it's probably a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a blessing, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so the new album again, May 12th. Yes. It, no, it's a two-parter. Yeah. Like, what do you call that? A yeah. Double, it's what, it's double a double record. Yeah, yeah double, double record. album. Um, so you've only waited five years. It's not very long. You have a good excuse. So. You have a good excuse. We'll, get, we'll, we'll let it fly. <laughs> so I was like, uh, if people have been waiting this long, we need to give them two records. You know, we need to give them enough content that's going to be like, oh, okay, I see what the, the wait was for. We worked on the record for two years, and I had, when I say actually had a ball, like every single song surprised me. It was that thing of like, what? Wait. Am I, am I really getting to write this song or am I really getting to sing this way? Or There was just so much that evolved in the course of making this record. My friend, she came and documented every day. She was just always there with the camera. She's one of my best friends. And she was like, I, I want you to see the footage from like when we first started the record to when we ended. She was like, the different, you became so much freer. You walked in with so much fear, so much intimidation. You left so free, like sharing your ideas and saying, just from the course of the time that, that we had worked on the record, she was like, you grew so much, I don't even know if you realize it, but I, can, I could see it behind the camera lens. And just that, it was really, really special. I feel like this is a record that made me just as much as I was a part of it. So it was really beautiful. Well, I gotta say, um, your team at Atlantic, yeah. Is um, so so wonderful top and so notch. top. Okay, top a list, oh. um, but they're so really good. dedicated to the record mm -hmm. and the new single. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank God I do. Yes. And um, it's really moving up the chart. Yeah. 
We're playing it on Lucy, and it's really, uh, it, we, I, I just heard it walking up the stairs. And that yes. was not on purpose, <laughs> I promise. I knew you'd be like, you know, getting ready. But, Thank you. Um, you know, it really is moving up the chart and uh, getting the airplay and getting in people's hearts mm -hmm. where it should be. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, your team has been wonderful on the, awesome. you know, record side. So whoever made that decision, yeah. you know. Well, the decision was made like this. So the double album thing was Julie Greenwalk. Uh -huh. She she um, is incredible. She sat with me when we listened to the whole record, all songs from top to bottom, and she said, I feel like I'm about to ask the artist of the Mona Lisa to just cut it in half, but do you mind cutting your record in half? Because originally it was supposed to be one piece, and I was like, oh, my gosh. She said, just think about it. You you care about these songs and not a lot of people have two hours to just sit here and listen to every single song in one sitting and i said yeah i don't want song like 15 to 19 to just get lost because people are just drained like we've been listening to this girl and her voice for this song so i broke it up into two pieces so that it feels like it's one body of work but it can be over a couple of different listening experiences so that you can really digest the whole thing um and then they the thank God I do moment happened. Why, why did we choose that song? Um, it's because everybody in the, the offices were crying, apparently. That's what, that's what they told me. They said, we're going to pick this one first because it's the one that's gone through the litmus test of emotion. Like, every person in here, when we play it, it's the one song that they get tears for. So that's kind of a telltale sign, which was really special to me that it wasn't like it had this type of tempo and this type of thing. Like, I understand all that, but it was it was beautiful as an artist to see that there's this other emotional component that got that got the win in and the moment. And that's not always the norm right no, now with not songs all. that come yeah. out to radio and platforms and stuff, songs that yeah. actually hit your heart. Mm -hmm. And this one, of course, did the same for me, and I'm yeah. sure all you that have heard the song as well. Um, it's uh, So it's really nice that you, that story that the label actually felt yeah. that and because yeah. um, the song, y'all were so kind to play it because well, I no, know it's you know like it not breaks, the traditional. It breaks through, it, but it breaks through other songs on the mm -hmm. radio. Where yeah, I love songs that just are fun and get you, you know, dancing. yeah, get you dancing, I'll get but you, you crying, know, you know, yeah, but you know, but we do need some songs in our life that also, um, you know, can hit our heart. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's why for me, on Lucy ninety three three, I just think that it's a, a song that really breaks through. Who cares if it's different? I like yeah. different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it it hits the heart. So again, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You know, really. So, um, so really quick, you're gonna do the song, right? Yeah. I hope you're gonna do the song. We'll find out. Well, after you just set it up like that, <laughs> you're gonna do the song, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna do the song. Um, the album's out May 12th. I think you guys have um, postcards that are signed, right? Everyone's got postcards mm, on. Yeah. And they're signed today. They're not like stamped. Lauren wasn't back there stamping them because I actually saw her sign them. <laughs> So she did sign them, and there is a barcode on there that you can scan and pre-order the record for May 12th. So again, thank you, Atlantic. Thank you, Lauren, for doing this. And uh, I also want to thank our sponsors, uh, Domain Northside, Valencia, um, Tex-Mex Garage. The food is amazing. It's amazing. Did you, you have to try it if you haven't. I will. Okay. I'll go sneak uh, in. You know, have the label go get it for you. Okay. Okay. And, um, and DC Law, uh, who are incredible. Um, Texas Injury Lawyers. So again, thanks to everybody. Thank you. Um, Lauren's going to do another song. And um, again, uh, you, we got to come back. Yeah. You really do. Maybe I'll be back at Austin. Soon yeah, and again, we're going to give away a pair of tickets. Let's do, can we do that really quick? Yeah, let's do it. Because you know, who wants to win a pair of tickets to San Antonio? <laughs> and you know what's even better? Can I, can I drag this mic over there? Uh, I can. I know, but I'm already yeah. stepping on it. You know, I'm a little klutzy here. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, Lauren, because if I won a pair of tickets from you, I'd want you to, like, touch them. Okay. Okay? <laughs> okay, so, wait, hold this. Okay. Okay. Ooh, I like this. Wow. Wait, it says you're closer. Let's see. You want to... Okay. I'm not going to let my lips touch it. Yeah. Okay, there. No, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I just don't mind. Okay. <laughs> All right, now. Okay. All right, so this is going to... This is gonna be. This is gonna be. Um, this is gonna be for a pair of <laughs> This is gonna be for a pair of tickets to see Lord in San Antonio on December. Now you got me all frazzled. December second, third, whatever. We know it's in December. Okay. 
but she's doing this early for us, so thank you. Okay, here we go. And the winner is, can you read, are you going to read it better than I did? Um, Grant Simmons. Come on down, Grant. All right. The prize is right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. All right. Hold on to that. I, and I think um, Momo's around here to get the information or they'll take care of you. <laughs> All right, let's do the song Lauren oh. again. Thank you. We do belong on a game show together. Yeah, actually. let's do it. Or um, game, uh, or, or Home Shopping Network. If you decide to sell this, <laughs> let me be your host. Okay, I'll do it. All right. All right, this is Lauren's latest single that you can hear on Lucy. Thank God. You're crushing I do. It. You're crushing okay, it. no tears for me, and I won't look at the audience. Oh. All right. <laughs> That's it. I have to do something. Wait, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> the other day, there was this mom with this little girl, and sh the mom was... The little girl was having the time of her life, and the mom is just bawling. And I, I had to stop looking because I, I got that lump in my throat. I was like, I'm not gonna finish the song if I. Anyway, okay, so you're, not you you're not setting this up. You're not setting it up good here, Lauren. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is. Thank God I do. Give it up for Lauren Daigle. I've seen love come and I've seen love walk away. So many questions. Will anybody stay? It's been a hard year. So many nights in tears. All of the darkness trying. Go if 
Lauren Daigle. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Do you care if I introduce my band real quick? Of course, okay? of course, Lauren. Okay, awesome. We have Grant Pittman over here on the key. Yes, Grant. We have Chelsea on the cello. We have Benny on the guitar. Thank y'all so much. Thank Does you again. Come? Thank you again for coming. We really, really appreciate it. Yes, this is awesome. That was Thanks really for playing fun. the song. Thanks for coming and giving us your time. And did y'all get to come out of school for this? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> cool Parents Awards. I, are you the parent? Yes, yes, yes. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I know you're not the mom. All right, we're done? Okay, well, we're done. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much.